As we can see now on screen, the throttle position sensor is attached to the side of the throttle body and connected directly to the throttle plate shaft. The throttle position sensor or TPS measures throttle opening as well as rate of change. The TPS is a variable resistor and it is a main input to the ACM and TCM or transmission control module. The three wires to the TPS are the ACM provided round, the 5 volts reference line also regulated by the ECM and the TPS signal line. It is at this signal line where all measurements regarding the TPS are going to be made. In order to test the TPS ground, you need to remember three main test points. These are the TPS sensor ground and the battery negative and positive terminals respectively. A second set of test points to remember are the TPS 5 volts reference line and the battery negative terminal. By measuring the voltage at these two points, you can safely assume that the ECM is providing the 5 volts reference. The TPS ground and the 5 volts reference line are needed for the TPS to function properly. All kinds of drivability problems may be present when in fact your faulty issue may be with one of these two lines. And yet, another test that is done is jumping our BPS signal line to the TPS ground and then afterwards to the TPS 5 volts reference and watching the voltage change on the scan tool. Do not jump the TPS ground and 5 volts reference line or you will short the ECM circuitry. In order to obtain a TPS waveform, smoothly actuate the throttle plates. The output waveform should show a smooth rising voltage signal without any glitches or sudden voltage drops. This is a waveform capture of a defective throttle position sensor. Notice the glitch showing a blind spot, which is indicative of a faulty TPS. Be extremely careful in analyzing a TPS signal wave. It is sometimes very difficult to see a faulty or flat lining TPS on the scope screen. This is a standard graphing multimeter or oscilloscope graticule. The lower or horizontal part of the graticule is used to denote frequency or time. It is here where our frequency or time measurements are taken. The vertical part of the screen is then used to denote voltage values. If using an oscilloscope, use the standard navigational buttons to adjust the frequency or time setting, as well as voltage. On a graphing multimeter, you can do the same by using the thumb wheel and the Y and N buttons. Adjust the graphing multimeter according to your needs. The vertical line on the graticule is used to measure amplitude, voltage, or current values. From this point forward, all TPS testing will be done at the connector side. This makes it simple and easy to test. As explained before, the TPS connector is composed of the ground, 5 volts reference and signal line. First, locate the ground wire at the TPS connector. It is here where all of our BPS ground tests are going to be made. Start by connecting a suitable wire tap to the TPS ground wire. The first step is to perform a voltage drop from the TPS ground to the battery ground. As a general rule, no more than 100 millivolts should be seen 
with the engine running. Remember, the 100 millivolts rule can be applied to any computer controlled ground circuit. In our case, our TPS ground circuit is well below the 100 millivolts limit. In the event that a value higher than 100 millivolts is seen, this is a sign of impending high resistance present at the ground circuit. Then, switch the graphing multimeter to battery positive. Since you are now reading across TPS ground and battery positive, battery voltage should be seen on the multimeter screen graticule. This is done to double check the TPS ground circuit. The next step is to test the TPS 5 volts reference line. This is done by taking a reading from the TPS 5 volts reference line and battery ground. Don't forget to switch back the graphing multimeter to battery ground. In our case, the meter should show the full 5 volts reference value. This indicates that the reference circuit is working properly. You do not have to disconnect the TPS sensor connector in order to perform this test. Step number 3. Connect the graphing multimeter lead to the TPS signal wire. This is in preparation for our TPS idle signal test. Compare the TPS idle signal voltage value to proper specifications. This is the closed throttle TPS value, which will be interpreted by the ECM as a closed throttle input signal. In the event that the TPS closed throttle signal is off, perform a minimum error rate adjustment. The minimum error rate adjustment will be explained further along this video. Step number 4. Proceed to perform a TPS sweep test. The sweep test is done by smoothly actuating the throttle and watching our DPS signal being graphed. The graphing feature is very convenient and absolutely necessary during throttle position sensor sweep tests. Remember to actuate the throttle as smoothly as possible in order to obtain a slow rising TPS waveform. Freeze your TPS signal sweep and analyze the slow rising voltage value. Don't forget that it is sometimes very difficult to observe these TPS blind spots. Look for any sudden voltage drops and flat spots on the wave trace. <laughs> 